Today, we're looking back at five movies that traumatized a generation. Did these movies leave you scarred too? Grab a drink, grab a snack, and let's go all the way back. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Gen X Unfiltered. Today, we are talking about five movies that we can all agree, traumatize the generation. Oh, yeah. Lots of sleep were lost over these movies, I think. Yes. So, interestingly enough, we decided to do some research, and we went back and watched these movies as the young adults we are. Yeah. Yeah. That was good to do, because some of these I haven't seen in 30-plus years. So, I think the goal of doing that was to re-watch them now as adults, based on our memory of kids, to see if we really had reason to be traumatized and scarred as kids. And it was interesting, too. Like, watching them as adults, different experience than I remembered in some cases. Because I didn't remember yeah. half this. I was remembering a lot of this stuff yeah. a lot differently than it actually happened. Well, that, oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah, remembering it, thinking it went this way, and I watched it, like, oh, I thought that happened here and this was different yeah. yeah so watching it again now it's like oh this is totally not what i remembered at all so you guys might be wondering which five movies we are talking about we know there is a gazillion movies we could talk about if we kind of picked the top five that we really remembered as a kid being like oh my gosh i need to sleep with my parents tonight yeah and these are all like family friendly yes. movies we'll say like these yeah. are, we're not talking horror movies no. here by no. means. these are like, like kids, and movies. I, I, kids I, I movies i think that's a key point is why these were traumatic it was your kids because they were intended for kids yes. and families yeah well, these aren't like nightmare on elm streets or yeah. these are like family friendly movies that yeah were, were for kids yeah exactly mm, not so family <laughs> and friendly. uh yeah kids got problems after watching yeah, these things yeah. watching right. them as a kid you're like what the hell did i just watch <laughs> so let's just get right into it off the top one of the first movies that we'll talk about, Eric can give a little brief synopsis for anybody out there who has not seen it, but The Never Ending Story. The Never Ending Story was a trauma, a traumatic movie to watch. So real quick for anyone who hasn't seen it, it's about this kid who uh, is bullied and while running away from the bullies, he goes mm -hmm. into a bookshop mm -hmm. and in this old, old bookshop, he finds an old man and a book called The Never Ending Story. Mm -hmm. And this kid reads the book and he actually becomes part of the story. Now, on the surface, that's like, oh, my gosh, that's a really cute, good feel kids movie. Yeah. No, it ain't, folks. No, no, it, no, it was. Just, it's pretty dark. It's got some dark themes it's, in there. Uh, yeah. It's, now, it's, it's yeah, it was. It's pretty much like the overarching theme of the movie is just like depression and despair and yeah. trying to like don't succumb to it, basically. Yeah. Well, and yeah. here's a quick thing. And we can each sort of quickly say, like, when we remember watching it, my dad loved this movie. He made me watch this movie when I was a kid. I watched it in my house. On Maybe the, he was afraid to watch it alone. On the VHS <laughs> tape. But he, he loved this movie. But did you see it in the theater, Steve? I am. This is a movie that and we talked about this. I think I saw I'm positive. I saw it in a movie theater when I was like, Five. Okay. And I fair think enough. that's the only time I ever saw it. I believe maybe I watched it once more after that. But traumatizing. Yeah. Steve saw it once as a little guy. I was like, never going back. No, I, I remember one scene scaring you? me. Did you see it in the theater? No, no, no. I saw. I, I rented. And I didn't rent it. My parents rented it <laughs> on VHS back in the day, and I saw it at home. All right. So did you see it in the theater? No. I mean, I don't thought I remember. I remember my dad watching it. I don't even know if I watched it on VHS. That might be a lie. I think we might have watched it on TV. So I was probably older and I was still it was on TV. Yeah. At some point. I don't know. It was definitely on TV at some point. I watched it like with my dad when I was younger and I was like, no, no, dad, not my Jimmy Jam. But, you know, it is what it is. So, OK, Eric, first off. Yeah. What is one of the I think when you were doing some Googling, there's some sort of iconic scenes that are fundamentally traumatizing for well, people. I think we'd all talk about like our own individual experience with this movie and what left right. us traumatized walking away from this thing. Okay, Eric, you go first. And for me, definitely like, you know, the swamp of sorrow and uh, Atreyu, like the... The horse. A Atreyu, like the, the, the kid, kid yeah. and his horse, Artex. Uh, the horse just gives up on life in the swamp of sorrow. He was, what what kind of a message is that with just send kids? He was in there for four oh, and a half yeah. seconds. And not like the scene itself is like one thing, like the horse, you know, gives up on life in, in the swamp, which is sad. Yeah. But the scene itself is so like, um, what? Traumatizing. Traumatizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, watching this poor kid scream for yeah. his poor horse just to move. Exactly. Move, he's go. like, he's begging this, this his horse to keep going. Like, come on, don't give up. Like, don't let the sorrow overtake don't let the sorrow you. Overtake you. The horse is just like sinking slowly. And like, and then when the horse does sink and is, is you know dead in the swamp, the next shot is you know a tray who's sitting there by himself, like in the swamp, just like slumped over, like you know, just sad. I'm like, yeah. 
Can we what? Also, what's also, what did I just see? Let's also mention, too, that the kid in this movie, now, I don't know exactly how old they're supposed to be, but the kid in this movie looks like he's probably like 10, 11 years old. Yeah. yeah. He ain't no teenager. He ain't no, 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 no. Dog. He's no, like no. maybe 12 he's tops. He's a yeah. young kid. And horrific. I yeah. can't stand anything where animals die. But that's the, okay. So that was sort of, I think we can all agree, was a scene that was really sad. I didn't remember that scene until I rewatched no, the movie. Oh, that's the scene. I definitely remember that. You know, and then seeing there's memes about it and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. No, I that was a scene that's like, did not remember very that. Very as a kid. Like anything with animals, it's but, no bueno. But yeah. that was really, yeah. Steve, yeah. you had a other scene that you said scared you when you were a kid. The scene I remember, and it's funny, when we watched this again, it was different. I had, well, I, was like I thought it was two different. I thought it was one scene. But I was like, yeah. oh, it was two totally different things in the movie. But there's a scene where the the boy is, so the kid that's reading the book is up in the attic. Yeah, and there's like a crack of thunder and a there's like a stuffed wolf's head that falls and like it makes him jump. And mm -hmm. I remember that scaring me, like making you yeah. know because it was like a jump scare. Mm -hmm. But I got it totally mixed up with another part of the movie where there's a wolf. Eyes. That, with green that, eyes. Yeah, that jumps out of a like a cave at another scene. So yeah. I somehow sort of morphed those two into like one. Yeah. And I thought that the wolf jumped out and then it cut to the wolf's head falling and like one scene, but it was two totally Separate different things. Scenes. But but as a kid I remember that now, scaring me. Here's my thing, which may not be a popular opinion. The damn flying dog scares me. I know he's, he's nice. A big guy. I know he's nice. It's the weird fish amphibian the, body the with the dog scales head. Scales on him are a little weird because it's don't like fluffy, that. like almost like a like a golden retriever. I don't. I, like I would have liked him if he was all fluffy more. Yes. Yeah. Now, yeah. This is the thing where I was talking to you guys about, and you guys are like, "Girl, you're crazy," and I clearly am because there was nothing in the movie about this. But then you guys said there was like a never-ending story too, which I think I might be getting confused. There was a, a two and a three. There was actually. three of them. Yeah. So I as a kid because before we even watched this movie I said this to you guys and you guys were like what are you talking about but there was a scene where I thought it was the dog what's his name again Falcor, Falcor um, like really sick or like dying or something and you guys said it was the horse and I was like no I remember the big dog lying on the ground being really sick and like I don't know if he dies but it was really sad and it made me scared that didn't happen in that movie so I don't no, know what I'm thinking the first, no I don't think I saw the Never Story 2. I saw part and two, but I, I really don't remember don't, it. If I did, I don't remember. Yeah, so it's very possible that you're just thinking of one of the other. I mean, I saw the second. part of the trilogy. <laughs> I saw the second one and stuff because my dad really liked the movie. But yeah, again, so overall, um, I think the movie itself is a very dark-ish movie. Like, there's it, not a lot of it's happiness. It's a lot about, like, depression. I, it, yeah. You know, like the. Yeah. The nothing. The nothing that's yeah. taken over the world. It's just, it's like, yeah. black. Nothing that's eating everything up. Yeah. Even the swamp of Sora where it's like if you're feeling sad, the, the feelings so, will swallow you and you'll yeah. sink to your death. Yeah, exactly. Like you know, the, like the, it's... Uh, the nothing is just the emptiness that remains after you've given into despair. Yeah. This so it's, it's be... very much about like... No. No. Negative thoughts and feelings and yeah. feeling I depressed, it seemed like. do not condone this movie as a children's movie. It's just no. No. No, no, <laughs> no. I think it's if if you're gonna if you're gonna try and introduce it to your child now, I yeah. would definitely say you want to make sure they're probably like 10, 11, 12, 13. This is not a movie for like 33. five, six, yeah. seven year olds for 37. sure. Seven, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, like I think we briefly said, like in the movie for I think it was like nineteen eighty three or nineteen eighty four. Eighty like, four, yeah. It still holds up pretty well. And that's what I was gonna say though. But like watching it again, like it. It's a decent story. The, the, the story was good. Yeah. The acting was good. The yeah. effects for the time. I mean, there's a few green screens yeah. where it's kind of like, oh, but because everything's sort of like handmade, like pops, props and stuff like that, it, yeah. it didn't look, it didn't date itself that that bad. But I can say I will not be watching that movie again because it still made me, I had a dream last night about it. Yeah. Like, no. Yeah, I, just I think this it. movie left a bunch of kids with trust issues. Yes. That, yeah. but what a theme song. The Never End Story song. That's fantastic. <laughs> that's been stuck in my head since we watched it. I love that song. Lamal, that Lamal, is Lamal, an amazing that's, song. That is a great song. So, it got, had a revival with uh, Stranger Things. Yeah. So you yeah. just watch it for the theme song alone. That, that's true. That'll take away all your all your fears. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Should we get on to the second movie? 
Yeah, let's yeah. let's do it. All right. The second movie is a movie that I watched a few I think we all probably watched it one, two, three times when we were younger and even maybe as adults, but we rewatched it again to get the full experience. And that movie is E. T. Yeah, this was one of the highest grossing movies of all time for a while. Really? Yeah. It was up there, yeah. We, oh yeah. E. T. was mm-hmm. huge. Probably, yeah. probably up until like the two thousands when the Marvel movies started coming out, but E. T. was E. T. was up there. Really? Oh yeah, E. T. was a huge, huge success. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Mm. So a lot of people have seen this movie. But anyway, anyway, for anyone who hasn't seen it. Yes. Basically, it's about an alien that gets abandoned on Earth mm-hmm. by his, uh, his his people. Uh, they have to take off because the feds are coming. And while he's on Earth, <laughs> while he's on Earth, he befriends a, a human boy yes. and his family. And they try to get the, the, the point of the movie is they have to get him back to his planet because he's dying on Earth. E.T. go home. Phone yep. home. Whatever. That's right. E.T. Yeah. E. phone home. That's that's the thing. Now, a young Drew Barrymore is in this movie. A very young. Very she's young. Like, what, she's like four? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, she's this really was, young, that yeah. was kind of like one of her first movies. I think it was her first I think it might have been her first one, yeah. Yeah. Now, overall, re-watching the movie, the movie's good. Like, again, it holds up well. It's like good story. The acting's whatever. 80s acting. It is what it is. Um, I would, but there is some scenes that are just, eh, they still hit hard as an adult. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely, like, watching it again, yeah, it definitely, again, the story holds up. The, the movie itself, yeah, it, it was good to watch. It, you know, it didn't really date itself, so other than, obviously, styles and stuff like that, but... Yeah. I think we all agree that the one scene that is just iconically traumatizing, and I remember being a kid being like, oh, my gosh, was when he was dying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when he's, it's, like, lying in the bed, he's all white and he's stuff all like white. that, and they're like... They tried to revive him with, uh, they have the defibrillator out. They're trying to bring him back to life. Yeah, yeah. that was definitely shocking. that whole, I remember as a kid that being, I remember, I don't even remember it happening in the movie when we watched it. Again. Yeah. I remember like when the, um, I don't remember being white. Yeah. But that's at the point where like the government's right. trying to find them. So they're there like in their hazmat suits and stuff yes. like that. But I remember like a hand or something like coming through the blinds. Oh yes. yeah. I remember that being, as a that kid, that super scared creepy. me. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm afraid the, with that. When they invaded the house yeah. with their space. Yeah. When the, the feds found the fed, them. Yeah. They're all showing up to try and contain ET. Yeah. 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 You know, the, the government doesn't necessarily want an alien running around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, it was, yeah, but seeing him dying there and stuff, it was still as creepy as I remember. Yeah, yeah. that scene definitely still gave me the, like, that, that was tough to watch because they did a really good job of, like, um, showing Drew Barrymore's character kind of watching the whole, like, scene. Yeah. And when, like, uh, they shock E.T., you see, like, Drew Barrymore just, like, jump back, like, you know, with that big, like, electric, like, yeah, boom, like, back what are they doing to this thing? Yeah, what are they doing to this thing, right? You know, like, you know, as a kid, you're watching this and you're like... Yeah. Is, is E.T. going to die here? Like, yeah, oh, my yeah, God. No, it was. Uh, yeah, it was. It was a lot. And even yeah. rewatching it. So this movie specifically rewatching it. I definitely like remembered it pretty much how it was. And I had the same feelings watching it as an adult as a kid. So, you know, like I wasn't making up that random things in this movie that scared me. It actually was like a, <laughs> yeah, no, an I remembered emotional it. reaction. Yeah, I remembered it pretty well to what we saw. Yeah. 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 But I definitely that was one of the. I remember that was one of the few movies we actually owned on VHS. We actually had E.T. on VHS. Oh, I so think I, I did, So I definitely too. watched it a few times as a kid and stuff like that. But yeah. So, interesting quick story. My mom tried to introduce E.T. to my seven-year-old nephew. And he's a kid who, you know, he gets kind of scared a little bit easily. And I was like, Mom, like, this movie's terrifying. What are you doing? And he watched He couldn't watch the whole thing. He had to watch it in bits. But, yeah, I mean, even now as a seven-year-old, yeah. it's a lot. When you don't really understand. Because I'm guessing at that young age, you don't really understand what aliens are. They're well, just this weird thing. Aliens itself can be, like, a scary concept, right? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. man, like, a creature from outer space. Mm-hmm. As good e. as it looks bad. weird. Like, if, you know, like, yeah. he's not yeah. scary looking, but he's not, like, cute. He looks like a weird, yeah. like, kind of worm Tootsie Roll type thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> That's also, really the way to describe him, actually. Really, He's like a worm Tootsie Roll. Really quickly, though, before we move on, though, another scene, which is kind of the same, the scene that I didn't like was when the older brother found him in the river. Oh, <laughs> that was... He looked rough. Well, that's yeah. when he's, he's yeah, dying. I yeah, know, like I, that. I, I That I actually don't remember. I don't I didn't remember, remember that. About that but part. Like, oh, yeah, and he's lying in the water and stuff yeah. like that. Like, he looks like a bloated fish or yeah. something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That he doesn't look right. I mean, I'm not an rough. alien doctor, but. <laughs> no, it's like, I'm pretty, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but it was, yeah, it, it definitely held up well, but I could see as a kid watching it now, yeah. still going to be scary. Yeah, exactly. But I feel like this movie, unlike um, Never Ending Story, this movie, I feel like, had a nice, like, a good feeling about it overall when it ended. 
Yeah. Right? Well, like, the Freddy's story had a good feeling when yeah, it ended. Yeah, we just don't like it because it was dark and this horse died. No, yeah, no, they okay, all ended. Okay. I mean, yeah, there was, there was, you know, like most movies, right? There was some redemption yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And the Neverend story, it wasn't like it didn't end in like doom and gloom. Yeah. yeah. The Neverend story definitely wrapped up really fast. Yeah. It was, it was all of like a sudden, it was just done. like, with like a voiceover. And then he went back and everyone's yeah. happy. It's like, oh, that. Yeah, it was just not, yeah. It was yeah. <laughs> but ET anyway, definitely, yeah. yeah, it ends on a positive note and like yeah, exactly. it kind of brought the because it was like a single mom and it brought like the older brother and the siblings kind of together and like the yeah it was just it just felt like nice and there's some yeah. dark under, undertones to et though like because like there's a whole like divorce subplot right so there's some serious issues there for kids like yeah that's with, right like, the, yeah, the yeah, mom is yeah. divorced and, and like because the dad's in california right yeah and then with, with, uh, with sally with, and like or, yeah, and that's obviously El- Elliot it. uses that to like you know throw a shot at his mom. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That's the yeah. That's and, uh, it. and in the '80s, like you know, divorce was not that talked about when we were kids and stuff like that. No. It was sort of like this weird yeah. thing that you know people didn't really talk about or acknowledge. It was yeah. a lot different when you know in yeah. the '80s, divorce and stuff like that was not as socially acceptable. I guess it was a newer thing, but like back then, right? Like yeah. families were you know single moms and divorce became more prevalent. I think like late '70s and '80s. Yeah, yeah. like it was sort of, but it was not. You know, like, yeah. it was kind of like hush hush. It, it was, was like, taboo. oh, you know, yeah. Yeah. you just yeah. didn't talk about it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, so I mean, you know, ET. I would say that I would watch again. Yeah, no, oh, definitely. Yeah, it was good. It was and I think, yeah, if you want, again, it, it held up well. Like, yeah. So again, some of the effects are kind of cheesy, but overall, yeah. like, it's you can watch it again. It's not like some terrible like yeah. candy eighties no. movie. Yeah. All right, number three on the list is Gremlins. Oh, this is a fun one. Like Gremlins. Yeah. The, I, Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I perhaps watched it when I was a kid. I knew about it, like, as an adult. I don't yeah. remember if I watched it, but we rewatched it because, you know, first of all, it wasn't anything like I remember. And that movie is absolutely terrifying. Why would any child, why would any parent let their child watch that movie? It's I saw this. I saw this one in the theater. Did, he, uh, oh, yeah. did your oh, yeah. parents not love you? Uh, I questioned that after I left. <laughs> oh, I was like, um, not their father? Is this you're telling me, like, uh, you're getting rid of me? Like, so many things done wrap in this movie. But yeah. I know, Eric, you specifically said there was one scene that sort of, again, Well, hold on. Like, for anyone who hasn't seen it, oh. what's it about, right? Oh, my gosh. We forgot the recap. Eric, Yeah, no. we got the recap here. So, basically, yes. Gremlins is a story of, like, the worst Christmas gift ever. <laughs> yeah, it's basically, <laughs> basically it's, it's what it is. So, uh... There is an inventor, uh, and he is going in. An American inventor. He's in the, a shop in Chinatown, and mm-hmm. he finds uh, this gift. It's this little um, uh, mugwai, is what it's called. It's a little furry, um, furry pet, mm-hmm. and he must have it for for his son. But this uh, this pet, this mugwai, comes with three very important rules. First, don't get him wet. Second, <laughs> he hates bright light. Don't put him in the sunlight. And yeah. third, and most important. Don't feed him after midnight. That's right. That was the big dire, one. That was, that was like the key one. They dire said dire consequences. Yeah. So this little cute pet comes with consequences mm-hmm. and a lot of responsibility. So he brings the pet home, gives it to his son, and of course, you know, rules are meant to be broken. That's right. All the rules get broken, uh, and then chaos ensues. That's right. Basically, this mugwai turns. You know, he has other little mugwais, and then they turn into gremlins and they terrorize this town. During, during, right. during Christmas time, yeah. by that's the way. Right. It's also, that's right. That's always a debate, too, whether it's a Christmas movie or not. Look, but it takes yeah. place at Christmas, so it's... Uh, yeah. There is so much to unpack in this movie, and, like, <sighs> terrifying. But let's talk about the one scene that sort of is, you know, if you Google it, traumatizing scenes, it's the one scene that pops up. Eric mentioned it. And so we rewatched the movie to see this scene, and I didn't really think that out of all the things in the movie, that was the least terror- terrorizing thing, but traumatizing. Could, well, because, hold on. Say the, say the scene you're thinking of, because I might be thinking of something else. No, no, no. You were talking about the scene about no Santa Claus. Oh, yeah. That was for, for a kid, like, you know, who's <laughs> yeah, I don't going to see a Christmas that. movie who still believes in Santa. And they basically the whole, the whole like, story of, like, um, Phoebe Cates' character. I forget her name. Kate. She's telling the story about why she hates Christmas, right? Because it's sort of the whole thing and for her in the movie. She hates Christmas. Yeah. And the, they don't explain why. But uh, she goes into a story telling her boyfriend, Billy, what happened. And I guess one Christmas, uh, her, her father goes missing. And they don't know why. And then... There's a smell from the chimney, and she thinks <laughs> it's a, really she, messed up. She thinks it's a dead cat or something. So they call the police and they go to the fire department. And they go look in the chimney, and it's her dad in a Santa suit. He was dressed up to surprise them uh, uh, on Christmas, but he slipped in the chimney and broke his neck, and he was stuck up there and had died. And <laughs> that's how she, you know, realized the, there's, yeah. there's no Santa. No, yeah. And so as a little kid, you're like. What? No Santa? Daddy died in the dead, chimney. Daddy, daddy, dad, dad's dead in the chimney. There's no, no Santa. That's like, yeah. It was a very dark 
and re- revealing stories. Yeah. She just kind of drops on him too. Yeah, exactly. Watching it's like, where the hell did that come? Because she they yeah. mentioned that she doesn't like Christmas, yeah. but it's not like a massive sort of storyline. No. Yeah. And then she just drops this crazy story on him. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, like I mean, <laughs> drop this girl, Billy. She's a she's got she's trouble. Yeah, it's just like yeah. this crazy story. It's like Jesus Christ. It, it is. Yeah. That is Dark. a terrible yeah. story. But as a kid, I feel like, like I said, if I watched it, I didn't really clue into that part. To me, the terrifying parts were just like the little mug Mugu- mugwai. What's his name? Mugwai. Mugwai. He was cute. Like gizmo, I, wa- yeah. I kind of want a gizmo for myself. He's cute. Well, like, there, gizmo there was, was like the a, one that never changed. Right? He yeah. was always good. He was really popular. They had the stuffed animals of Gizmo and toys. Yeah. They were everywhere back yeah, then. Can I just ask one question though before we talk more about this? Like, okay, whatever. It's a movie. It's not real. Yada yada yada. But like. The dad comes home with this basically looks like a little stuffed bear that talks and squeaks and makes noises and is alive. Yeah. And nobody's just like, what is this weird creature? Yeah, no, I know. That's, no. So they, yeah, they just kind of gloss over the fact that he brought home this really random animal that no one's ever seen like, it's before. It's not like it's a dog yeah. or a cat. It's just like this really weird Well, even the fact thing. that the dad's like, hey, I yeah. have to buy this for my son at this weird, yeah. you know, yeah. this weird store and... Then the guy specifically doesn't want to sell it to him, right? So he gets the the little the grandson. boy the grandson, like basically yeah. steals it and sells it to him. It's yeah. Like, so the only scene that I some bad news right off the bat. <laughs> the only scene that I remember as a kid that I was like, "Ooh, that movie was awful." Was and it happened, and it still was effing dramatizing. And no, no thanks. Was the whole scene I didn't remember, but when the mom's trying to kill the gremlins because they're gremlins now and they're mean and they're evil. The gremlins are destroying your kitchen. Yeah. And she. Mixes them in the blender and turns them on the microwave. Yeah, puts one in the microwave. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty intense. I mean, she was badass. Mom. And even some of the girls, yeah. they actually like. There's they kill people too, right? Yeah. Like, they kill the teacher. Yeah, they kill the teacher. They the, kill the neighbor, the, Mrs. Deagle. Yeah, the, the woman who's on the her uh, electric stair. <laughs> That's lift. <right. laughs> But it's it's funny because it does. Like, there is some deaths in there. They're not super no. gruesome by any means. Yeah. But but, but like, the, the the mom in the kitchen like they, they scratch up her face pretty good and stuff. Yeah. And yeah. The 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 Kremlin the Gremlin not the Kremlin <laughs> the, the Gremlin in the tree. Yeah. That attacks the mom like yeah. and he's like on top of her like you know scratching her up and stuff. Like, yeah. That's pretty intense. Yeah. Like yeah. but like again we got to give props to mom because she was badass. She defeated those Gremlins in her kitchen. Oh yeah. She got a couple of butcher knives and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. No. It's. Uh, but again. Um, <sighs> The uh, she didn't seem that like, oh my god, they turned into gremlins like the no that like, it was just sort of like oh god like it was it just, just kind of happened yeah but yeah she was badass she killed but that microwave scene and the blender scene oof even well it's weird too because it. even the gremlins like they have them killing people but then they're like. Going around, that's the one that remember the one gremlin like flashes <laughs> the like There's a lot of like com- smoking comic cigarettes in the movie, and like right? it's, they're all like goofy and funny, yeah. but then yeah. they're killing people. So it's a very strange mix. Yeah, I I mean, I just don't think it's a kids movie. No, <laughs> like we're watching it. The scene that really like just to be more now was the the end when Stripe, the leader of the Gremlins, when he has his death scene at the end when like they, they kill him because he's in the. He's in that big fountain in the mall, yeah, trying yeah. to like make himself uh, replicate so he can get more more gremlins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they they pull the blinds down. And he starts melting in the sun. It's a pretty gruesome oh, scene. Oh yeah, and it's like all like his, his face is melting. His and then face he pops up at the end. It's all like yeah, the, yeah. The, like the, the gremlin skeleton pops out at the end. I'm like, ooh, that was that's pretty gruesome. It definitely seems like I don't know what it, I'd be curious if it was rated. That had to be like a PG-13 movie. I'm guessing. I don't know. It seems like know. it's. Traumatizing yeah. not, as heck. It's not a kid's movie. It's I, think, like, yeah. I think today it would be PG-13. I think oh so. Gosh. It's definitely not like yeah. for kids. It's it, it, it's weird because it's funny, but it's like kind of like, I want to say a horror movie. But no, I mean, yeah. it's campy it's like horror, horror, right? horror comedy, I yeah. guess. Yeah, because they, like, they, they do kill people and they attack people, but yeah. then they're doing like crazy stuff. Like in the movie theaters, all hanging out laughing <laughs> and doing funny, weird stuff. I don't know. It's, uh, it's kind of all over. It's a, I liked it, though. It's, yeah, it's, it's a good movie. I probably wouldn't watch it again. No, I think yeah. I, I might well. actually, I think I'm going to add it more into the Christmas rotation, I think. I think you forward. should. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't watched it in a long time, but. It's like, yeah. oh, that's good. Yeah, I forgot yeah. how it's all like Christmas and all that. Like, yeah. yeah, this could be added to like the Christmas rotation. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, Gremlins, uh, yeah. I mean, as an adult watching that scene with the microwave, it's how I remember it and it's awful. Yeah. It showed it to an 80s icon, a young Corey Feldman's in the movie, too. That's oh, right. Yeah. 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 I, for, I, for, I totally forgot he was in it. Yeah. So, it seems like, oh, yeah. I saw it, but it's like, oh, I totally forgot he was the neighbor or neighbor whatever's kid. friend. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I think we can all agree that Gremlins, not so much of a kid's. But again, okay, let's just stop for a second, though, as we talk about not so much kids' movies. The 80s were different. 
there, it's not like today where like parents would be like, no, nope, you can't watch that. Like, I mean, they didn't nerf the edges no, as much. No, no. Like, we were just thrown into watching these horrifically traumatizing movies. And I mean, we clearly turned out okay from it. <laughs> not so much. Yeah, I'm good here. There was, it was weird. Like, I remember my parents, most movies they didn't care about, but I remember like, they didn't want me watch, watching Ghostbusters when I was like six. That's so random. Weird. That's the yeah. Lead, like yeah. I know, but whatever. But, but I'm just saying, back then, like it was just like there wasn't a lot of filtering. Well, and, but like kids' movies were a little more yeah dark and mysterious yeah. and had yeah sort of these topics and stuff like that. It wasn't all like just maybe happy your, sunshiny cartoon stuff. Maybe there were some of those too, right? But maybe your mom hated Bill Murray. Probably. I mean, I don't blame her. <laughs> no offense, Bill Murray, but no, not your biggest fan. Bill Murray, but, he's great. But no, I do remember that Hopefully being one movie where it, there was a bunch of kids watching at someone's house and yeah, yeah, she didn't want me seeing it. Well, Aww. parents every so often would get these like little like, ooh, we better not let them watch yeah, that. But then it was reason, like think, whatever. Yeah. yeah, like I said, it hit different back then. Yeah. It was just like, here's some popcorn, go watch the movie that you're gonna have nightmares about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Different. Okay, number four, which I don't know if. I think, Steve, you may or may not have watched it as a kid. You couldn't remember. But we rewatched it. Yeah, we did our yeah. research. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Like the old one. The one from the, was it late late 60s? Late 60s. The uh, Gene Wilder one. Yeah. Yeah. So go ahead, Eric, with the recap of Oof. Willy Wonka. Okay, so for anybody who has not seen Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, this movie is about an eccentric chocolatier. Mm. That's that for a fancy word, chocolatier. Who owns a, a chocolate factory. Mm -hmm. And he has a, runs a contest. And based on this contest, he puts five golden tickets mm -hmm. in his chocolate bars. And if you get a golden ticket, you get to go on a tour of his factory, which is super mysterious. And everybody is like, here's what actually goes on in this place. Yes. And you get a lifetime supply of chocolate. <gasps> right there for that. Yeah. So was, as a kid, like, that's a pretty cool prize, right? Like, yes. a lifetime supply of chocolate and candy. Yes. Like, no, yeah. right, it would sign me up, yeah. Even, so, even now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? Now I'll take a yeah. yes, please. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is that your recap? That's the recap. Okay, that, really, that's really quickly, though. Oh, yeah, I guess, like, the, you know, so yeah, the, a little more happens. The basic <laughs> the, generality the, of the kids. The, yeah, so the, 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 you know, the kids uh, that win, they get in the golden yes. ticket. They go to the, the factory, and um, there's rules. Again, yes. rules here to follow. The kids break the rules, and then um, there are punishments. Right. And re right. really quickly, the main character kid in this movie is a very, 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 very poor kid yeah. who really wanted the chocolate. Of course, yeah. he got the chocolate. He took his grandpa, blah, 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 blah. Old Grandpa Joe. Couldn't yes. had left, he hadn't left his bed in 20 years, but as soon as he got that free ticket <laughs> in the <laughs> factory, it's like, Joe, Joe that's the energy. Boogie, yeah, I can I'm do really it. Go. It's a miracle. Now, <laughs> overall, like, I don't. Like, nothing in this movie really, like, traumatized me, per se. There was that whole one scene on the boat where everything was psychedelic. And yeah. Crazy. Yeah, it was kind of trippy. Yeah. yeah. Trippy. But, like, generally speaking, like, the movie wasn't, like, You know what did it for me? It was just the Gene Wilder's vibe in the movie. He, yeah. he, he was creepy. And it, you, you try to figure out why he's creepy, right? Because basically he, like... He didn't care if the kids, like, lived or died. No. Yeah. That was the weird part. Like, you're like, this adult, like, they're in his factory, and these kids, like, uh, the one kid's drowning in, like, the river of chocolate. Yeah. yeah. And the, the other girl, she, uh, Ruka Salt, I think her name was, she blows up, like, a big balloon. Yeah. yeah and she's yeah. gonna, like, you know, burst and die. And it's like, you broke the rules, so this yeah. is what you get. Yeah, exactly. It was basically, that was the whole thing. It's like, yeah. you yeah. didn't follow the rules, this is the punishment. Yeah. Yeah. We'll figure it out later. It yeah, was, exactly. It was, so it's pretty, it's pretty unsettling that an adult would be so unbothered by kids. You know, almost dying in this factory. Yeah. It was like a weird, I'm trying to think of like the vibe. Like it was weird. Like it was obviously like, you know, like on the surface looking at it, it was like a bright movie with the chocolate and the fountains and the, although I didn't like the Oompa Loompas. They were a little weird. They were like the kind of, yeah. 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 Um, and then, but like, yeah, there was something that was just like weird about it that I can't. Well, I mean, it's kind of a weird movie when you think about it because like the first, I won't say first half, but like up until. That you get to the chocolate yes. factory. It's just a normal movie, movie with a kid and this and stuff. But then it's like this really the chocolate factory is so bizarre. Yeah, yeah. That it's it's uh, it's like sort of two totally different movies up until that point where it's like this you know kid growing up in like lower middle lower class like England. Poor. It's yeah. poor, yeah, yeah. Just desperately wanted to go on this get this ticket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then in the factory, it's like this whole other weird world of like. Now this is where my. It's almost like magic, like. Yeah. This is where my brain went watching this as an adult. And it, I remember because I read the book and stuff, but I remember as a kid being like, like traumatized is the wrong word. I don't know what the word is. But even as an adult watching it, I was like, so the whole thing is, is this Charlie, the poor kid with his mom and his two sets of grandparents live in this like one room shack. Yeah. Like it's nothing. Yeah. 
But the whole thing is, is that the two, the four grandparents have like shared this one bed in the middle of the room for like, like 20, 20 plus yeah, years yeah. and they haven't left. And this is where my brain goes even as a child. <laughs> like literally they said Grandpa Joe hasn't been out of bed in 20 years. Yeah. How did he pee? How did he go to the bathroom? How did he, like, what's going on? Why or do they well, not? The logistics like, blew your mind. How did they, <laughs> there was a shared catheter. Like, how did they smell? Like, there was a lot going, and we're talking a small bed, and I get it. They're trying to be, like, they're poor, and, yeah. you know, that's yeah. how, but for some reason, that just really bothered my brain. Well, I can logistics. see there's, there's a lot of logistics there, yeah. It's a logistics like, nightmare, really. But yeah. it's like you said, he gets, Charlie comes home and has the gold thing, and, and why Grandpa one Joe. Shared bed? How, how did he make that bed? No, but Grandpa yeah. Joe hops up, Think of like, the smells. Yeah. Grandpa Joe hops up like you know he's 20 years old no as I said as soon as he gets that ticket it's like god damn I'm ready to go and that's sort of you see all these memes and stuff that but like you know he's a piece of garbage this old guy he couldn't work for 20 years but the second he's a free free trip it's like he's he's, he's healed it's magic it's a miracle he's a Fred Astaire out there you know (laughs) tap dancing around the living room and stuff I think overall that just kind of goes to like the whole vibe like on the surface, it was kind of a cute movie, like whatever. But like, it's just there's a weird vibe. Like, well, I don't know what's going on. The whole big thing too, like, what the hell is Willy Wonka? Like, is he a wizard or a magician? Like, or just a regular person? They don't really like, sort of no. explain. It's sort of like a like a Pied Piper thing. Like, he's yeah, trying to like lure like, these kids to his factory. Yeah, like, like, what's he doing? Yeah, yeah so it's yeah. like, but so I I think there's a new one, isn't there? Like a new Willy Wonka. Like a, there's two. So there's, there's a remake. They did a remake, but then there's something. There's like a prequel that came out. Is, or yeah. is it come out? Or is it, it coming it's, out? It's, it's out. It's I uh, got the guy from Dune. I forget yeah, his name. Yeah, Timothy, Timothy Chalamet. Chalamet. Yeah. He's dating Kylie Jenner. Which Jenner's. I think Whoa. it's like a prequel. It sort of explains. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because that's the biggest thing. It's like. Who is this guy? They don't even acknowledge like how does like is it magic that's doing these? Like yeah. how is he making yeah. this factory? Like all this crazy stuff and this weird guy, but there's no sort of explanations to like so, who he is or was he Mork from Orc? Like, you know what I mean? Like there's no, no like, yeah. At the very least, I would say out of the four movies we've talked about so far, this is the least traumatic movie. It's weird. And it's, more, weird it's more things. weird than traumatic. But yeah. Even the scene that they're talking about where they're on the boat and things are whizzing around and they're spinning, like even yeah. that's not soup. Like I don't think that's scary. No, I don't no. think if a kid watched it nowadays, no. It would be the yeah the only I mean yeah it's, it's just, just kind of it's just weird it's an out there movie yeah it's just yeah. weird but it's not For, like, when scary was, or traumatizing when I don't think movie come out well good question I don't have my phone on well, me like okay but I don't need the exact date but like just the I think it was the late sixties sixties so that's what I mean for the sixties it was weird like the oh yeah well, like you know the sixties was like the psychedelic era Wait, right? that's right. explain a lot yeah, yeah. yeah. although Gene Waller did do a good job. He did. Oh yeah! When he loses he his mind, you get nothing, sir. You yeah. get nothing. I know. And there's all like the freak end. out. Yeah, yeah. Because old Grandpa Joe goes into like you know, because he feels they were treated unfairly. Yeah, and he's like, you broke the rules. Yeah, I saw you eat that candy, and he floated like bubbles yeah. and yeah. stuff like that. All right, guys, I have been mentally preparing myself and psyching myself up to the talk last movie. About this. this is a doozy. And the fact that you guys even got me to watch this movie, dang, you guys are good. Okay, last movie. Return to Oz, probably the most horrifically traumatizing movie of all Definitely, time. Definitely, I think, talk to most Gen Xers. Yeah. Terrifying. That movie's on the list of things that you didn't want to watch again. I think this movie really impacted me because I didn't remember it at all. Like, I did I. I didn't remember it existed until I saw it come up on a list, and then a bunch of these unlocked memories yes. in my mind yeah. were reopened, and I'm like, oh my god, I saw See? this movie in the theater. Bl- I had a coloring book of Return to Oz. You were blocking <laughs> it out because it's yeah. so horrific. But before yeah. we get into that, Eric, what is Return of Oz? I can't even talk about it. I know. I don't even want to talk so about it. So basically, Return to Oz is the sequel to The Wizard of Oz. Horrible movie, too. Yeah, we can touch on that after. <laughs> but <laughs> basically, uh, in Return to Oz, uh, Dorothy... Returns to Oz. Returns, Dorothy's having like visions of Oz, and no one believes that it's a real thing. Mm. So Auntie M takes Dorothy to the insane asylum As to get electric does. shock therapy to, yeah. to, to get these memories removed from her from her mind. She's like ten. Yeah, so she escapes the insane asylum and ends up back in Oz. But Oz is not what she remembers mm. it to be. It's broken, depressed. the The wizard is is gone, and this new guy's taken over. And um, basically, she has to like restore Oz to its former glory. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, it's. Right off the uh-huh. bat, like you said, just, you know, they basically think, like, Dorothy basically suffered a head injury in yeah. the tornado. It's basically what they think it is. And they're going to, yeah, like, yeah, shock therapy her back to normal. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> really, really quickly before that. Now, I think we can all say that we remembered a few things differently than when we rewatched it. Yeah. I definitely remember the movie, and I remember to think it was creepy as hell. And, and it, yeah. was. it is. But it definitely was not 
I remember it being much more like the scenes I remember being like freaky were like just okay. little snippets. I remember being like a bigger so, thing. Interestingly yeah. enough, I think we all said the same thing. So the one thing we always said, well, one of the two things we always said about this movie that was horrifying was the monkeys on wheels that squeaked. They ain't yeah. no monkeys in this movie with wheels that squeaked. There's guys with no. wheels there on their but hands. But they weren't monkeys. No, monkeys though. The we monkeys were, were in, the, in the Wizard of Oz. Yeah. yeah. In the second one, it's like, which it might be even creepier. It's actual like humans. But it's like yeah. clowns or they something. Wear, they have helmets. When they put their head down, the helmet's got a face on top yeah, of it. It's they, a creepy they have face. super long like arms and legs. And the yeah. squeaking. The so movie, it's they're on yeah. wheels, but it's just yeah. I didn't remember those at all. I thought for sure it was yeah. the monkeys again. Yeah, but, but it then seems like oh. By now, the way, this was a Disney movie, uh, right? Yeah, thanks Disney. Disney. Yeah. What is going on now? Their dark era. Yeah, exactly. Probably the most traumatizing as a child that I always bring up when this movie comes up, and I'm clenching even thinking about it is the wall of Talking Heads. Oh, yeah. The yeah. walls of talking heads. Hallway yeah. of talking the hall, heads. The yeah. hallway of talking heads. But she like takes her head off and puts it in. I don't uh, remember yeah. that part. And then how can you forget this? The headless version of her is chasing Dorothy right? yeah. through the hall. When she wanted, right. I think she wanted Dorothy's head too. Yeah, right? she, she wanted, wanted to, she wanted to chop off Dorothy's head to yeah. add it to her collection. Yeah, exactly. Let's all remind people that we're talking about like a ten year old kid, and this is a Disney. Yeah, movie. so basically, it's yeah the. She was the queen, right? Yeah. She was the queen. And basically she has a wall or a, like a room and there's a whole bunch of human heads on that pedestals alive. that mm-hmm. are alive and she'll change the heads out on it. She'll change her head out for other ones and she wanted Dorothy's yes. head to add to her collection. So she yeah. chases her sc- through this screaming hallway. Well, Dorothy heads. goes in there to steal something from the one head that's sleeping. She wants to steal the a necklace or something like that. Yeah. Was yeah. that I forget. Or no, she wanted the key. It was a key, exactly. Yes. And then when she steals it, she runs in and... All the heads are sleeping. They wake up and start screaming. Yeah. Like, and I remember that scene being way more terrifying. Yes. Like all the heads I remember screaming. Yes. I thought like shattering glass or something. Yeah. But it was really just like a Five two second, second thing. As, as, as she runs out. out, the heads are screaming as she yeah. runs past them. And it was really quick. But I remember, I still remember terrifying. that scene, but I remember being way longer, way yeah. more it's funny, well, like, dramatic. But it's yeah. like, oh, that was just like a quick little snippet. But it was terrifying as a kid. Yeah, it's funny how you process that when you're a kid and like how much, how much more longer and more epic yeah. that scene yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. It was really like like five seconds long. Yeah. And it was not even that prominent. It was more just as the camera yeah. moves across the screen that yeah. you're screaming. But yeah. I remember it like being much more like... More screaming heads, a yeah. longer scene. Yeah. yeah. As a I, kid, it was terrifying. Yeah. I feel like it's I still need... still freaky now. <laughs> I feel like I need to have a conversation with my parents. What did they do to us? Well, they probably, you know, in your well, parents' defense, they were probably like, oh, yeah, Wizard, it's of the Wizard of Oz. It's the, the sequel. Okay, Let's but, take our kids. But Wizard of Oz is just as terrifying, but that's for another day. I hate Wizard of Oz. I am so terrified of Wizard of Oz. That's why I can't believe I even watched this movie. I am so terrified of Wizard of Oz that if people dress up for Halloween as like the scarecrow and stuff, like I actually physically yeah, you get really like, do not like the Wizard of Oz. This like, a reaction, huh? No, like yeah. literally, and people think I'm being dramatic and stuff, but like literally, I don't know what See, happened. Like, as a kid, I remember like watching the Wizard of Oz, I liked it. No, yeah. it's terrifying. I remember one. I remember once I got in trouble and I because I hit my sister with a snowball or something like that, and my punishment was I couldn't watch the Wizard of Oz on like oh my on God. the Disney Family Night yeah. on, on Sunday Disney's. Um, Magic Hour. Oh was yeah, called. the Magic That's of Disney on Sunday like nights. They were showing what well, they were gonna. I guess they were must have been showing the Wizard of Oz. I guess or no. it was on TV or something yeah. like that. My parents. That was my punishment. I couldn't watch it because I hit my sister with a. Thing oh my god, you were probably heartbroken. Oh yeah, I remember yeah. being like super upset. And I was like, Ugh. it was it was probably like five. No, yeah, terrifying. Absolutely horrif- horrifically terrifying. Nope, no way, no how. Nothing. Yeah, no. I, Wizard of Oz. I remember not. I remember seeing it and not whatever. But Wizard no. of Oz, Return to Oz. I remember seeing that. And that, no. that freaked me out. Yeah, don't like kid, that. and I still remembered it. Up until we watched it again. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So really, really quickly out of those five movies that we listed, if you had to pick one of those movies that you would say is still as equally, I mean, in an adult way, like whatever, but like still holds up as being traumatizing, which one would you pick? For those ones, I think I would definitely go with The Wizard of Oz or Return to Oz. What about you, Eric? I think so. Oh, geez, that's tough. Is Return to Oz or Never Ending Story? Never Ending Story would be oh. up there, too. But I think for me, Res- Return to Oz is just yeah creepier and just a different thing. Return to Oz impacted me so much, I think. Like, I actually blocked it in my memory <laughs> that I have to go with that one as being <laughs> yeah. like and the one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I the, still the, remember the Return to Oz. I, I got to stay away from. I agree. I don't think I'll ever be watching Return to Oz again. No. It was just such a weird. Nope. It's also like the weakest movie out of these ones on the list. I think it like, was terrible from, from story and like yeah yeah yeah. It just it was like not 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 a great movie. 
No. No, like you said, we said, like, never sort of E.T. Gremlins. You could rewatch those again. They kind of yeah. hold up and whatever. But, yeah, Return to Oz, if you watch it for some nostalgia factor, maybe. No, but no, no. But us no, watching no. it again just to remember it, and that's really yeah, probably quickly, the last time I've ever seen it. I am curious because I feel like... You know, everybody feels the same way as we all do. I mean, of course you do, right? Nobody has their own opinions. Just kidding. But those of you that are listening right now, before you forget, comment on whatever platform and let us know if you agree that The Wizard of Oz or Return to Oz is horrific. Yeah, if you've seen oh, it, let yeah. us know what or you thought about it. Yeah, you love it. Because I feel like there's some people out there who are like, oh my gosh, that was my favorite movie as a kid. I'm, I'm sure there's some people, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's that's probably a, some purists out there. Apparently, it's more true to the books than the first movie was. So, oh, if, oh, there's, yeah. if there's purists out there, they might let, you know, enjoy it. Yeah, I'm just yeah. curious because I feel like you're either totally traumatized or you loved it. There's no in between. I can say I've never met anyone that has ever told me they enjoyed no. Return to Oz. No. Mm-hmm. Not that I have a lot of no. conversations about it, but... Uh, <laughs> My palms are just sweaty thinking about I'm, it. <laughs> I'm like, if you can see me, I'm like yeah. twitching. I'm like, I don't yeah. like it. It just yeah. gives me like yeah. a Ugh, reaction. <laughs> All right, but I heard from a little birdie that we might have a little... Uh, it's quiz time. Let's just quiz, get to it. It's quiz, quiz time. time. Quiz Master General. Quiz, 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 Okay. Quiz. All right, guys. Um, Is it one question or multiples? <laughs> multiple questions. Oh, Don't no. be silly. Okay. All right. All right. So I got uh, four questions for you all here okay. about the movies we watched. Oh, okay. right. so some of these you might be might be pretty easy because we just kind of talked about Steve's them. Steve's going to win. I know. But he, here we go. No so pressure. what I'll do is I'll ask the question. You can answer first, and you can answer yeah, second. Yeah, because he, he'll know him probably more likely than I will, so he answers For, second. I'm going to assume yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So first question. In Return to Oz, <sighs> Return to, we're going back to that movie again. Damn. Yeah. What is the name of Dorothy's robot friend? Literally no clue. Okay. So uh, Kelly, can't even make uh, it up. X for Kelly on the first question. Literally no clue. She had a robot friend? Yeah. Oh, the weird little the fat timid, guy. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the, like, he's bronze. Little he, robot, he, the yeah. up. he looked like the peanut guy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember his name at all. Ralph? Hint, it's uh, one of uh, also the name of a super popular uh, social media platform. TikTok. There, there you go. Oh, TikTok. Okay, yeah, I would not yeah. remember that at all. Oh, all my right. God. Do you think TikTok stole it from that? Probably. Oh, no. I don't think so. Okay. Okay. Uh, question number two. I'm going to give you guys both an X on that one. Uh, next question. What is the name given to the Empress by Bastion in Neverending Story? Remember that's how I used to save uh, yeah, Fantasia right. by giving the princess a new or the empress a new name? Nope. What's the name? No idea. I don't remember at all. Myrtle. This is actually this is actually really hard. Yeah, I don't Why remember did you at give all. Us that? He, well, the next ones are easy. He sh- he shouts it out like in, in, in the rain. And I don't remember at all what he said. I, I, I didn't know it either. I had to look it up. Yeah. Moonchild. Okay. Moonchild. Eric, yeah. You are gonna be fired from guessing <laughs> okay. questions. Okay. Don't worry, the next two are easy. All right. Okay. Uh so in the Gremlins, what is the name of the mugwai that Billy Peltzer gets for Christmas? Okay, now you're just insulting us. I'm not. Oh no, what's his name? Well, you, you, you I'm said, letting you answer you said this his one. Name. Oh my gosh, I you said forget his name during now. this podcast. I know. Oh my gosh, I'm totally going blank. Mugwai. Oh my god, I'm not even. I'm not even joking. <laughs> this little singing head. The gremlin, the gremlin, the cute one. Yes. Yeah, the cute one. Oh my. Oh my god. I can't. Okay, uh, I'm giving you. Give her. Okay, Gizmo. Gizmo. <laughs> I just. All right. Forget. Ew. Oh, oh. That's like so your new sick. bit now. You just drool everywhere. It's like your third. Good thing we have oh, to get some new microphones. I'm old, okay? I drool. All right, so I'll give Steve a check mark oh for that God, one. I totally. Kelly, you're skunk so far. Yeah, well, this, this sucks. This is a chance to, <laughs> chance to redeem yourself here. Okay, so our ET. Um, what are ET's people collecting at the beginning of the movie? Remember when they first landed at the beginning of the movie? They're. No. They're, they're on Earth collecting stuff. You don't With remember? The aliens? The aliens, yeah. No, no idea. I did, yeah, I'm trying to remember what the hell they were doing. I remember that in the forest, but was it like pine cones or something? I don't even remember. Close. No, Eric, you saw P- plants. They, remember they're they're yeah. collecting, collecting flowers and bringing them onto the ship. Was it flowers? Okay. Yeah. Right, yeah. I thought your questions were gonna, were going to be like, out of these five movies, which one grossed more? No, I was actually asking <laughs> content related questions yeah. from the movies. Well, clearly. So, uh, so Steve wins. Okay. One right. Got one. So Steve is our big winner today. I knew uh, the, uh, the ET one. I'm like, I know they're in the forest, but I don't. Yeah. I couldn't yeah. remember if they were grabbing plants or pine cones or what. To be fair, I, I have the answers in front of me, so I probably wouldn't. Have Did gotten. you know the answer other than Gizmo? Did you know the answers? Uh, honestly, I would have answered Gizmo and maybe gotten the plant one, but probably not. I definitely wouldn't have gotten TikTok as the robot, and I probably wouldn't have gotten, I definitely wouldn't have gotten Moonchild. No. Because you can't even hear what he says, really. No, that's the thing. I was like, 
he uh, like we did, like yeah I'm like I know he said okay. even watching the thing I'm like I don't remember what he called her okay. I remember we watched I'm like oh you can ki- you can kind of make it out but it's like if, if you don't know what he's saying you'll never make okay. it out yeah. then why on earth would you make that a question if you're literally <laughs> saying you can't even hear what he says because maybe I thought you were a super fan and knew the answer no I hate Eric these are movies that traumatize us I don't watch them well you did terrible I know that's right <laughs> Eric, you're fired. Oh. <laughs> Next time I'll dial it down a little. <laughs> All right, guys, but comment below. Let us know what you thought of those five movies. Um, yeah, if you've seen them, let us know. Any other movies out there that you want to, you know, mention? Because there's lots. We we have a long list of movies. But those are kind of the five that popped out in our brain. And it was actually really fun to go back and watch them. Who's like, not sleeping tonight? Yeah. Yeah, right? yeah those yeah. are those. I fun pro- to watch them. Some I'll never want to watch no. again, but no. it was good. And I probably wouldn't have rewatched them if it wasn't for the sake of doing this. So no, it's kind of fun. Not, yeah, no, yeah. it was good. Good times. But that's it for today's episode. Uh, we thank you so very much for joining us. And uh, we'll see you next time, guys. Take care, everybody. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye.